Hey folks, Johnson here. All right, so Saturday, uh, figured I'd show everybody where we was at and what we're doing here. Have not grouted this bearing yet. Uh, the lags are in, everything's bolted down, it's good. And I've got it exactly where it needs to be. I just need to grout it and that's not a problem. But we have done a little work to this thing. Uh, got our other bolts cleaned up and in and that taken care of so it worked out really well and then uh, we've got some of our timing um, cam I guess put on get everything cleaned up uh, old and of course we got to put a drip puller here two drip pullers there I mean there's a there's a bunch of drip pullers we're gonna have to put on uh, this is the rod that goes up to the uh, wrist plate but we're currently working on that so I'll show you it okay the wrist plate we've got everything else loose but the wrist plate is actually stuck on the shaft so we're letting it soak uh, may end up having to press it or build a puller for it and we're gonna figure it out one way or the other but we've got to get these arms off yet and get some stuff cleaned up okay we're missing some parts and we're missing, we got these rods, thank goodness, because if we didn't have these rods, we would be in a bad spot. So, what we're missing, so we got the bottom rods that are missing, but they were straight. Uh, you know, I've got pictures, no problem. Like I said, thank goodness we got them ones. Uh, we'll have to make, uh, of course, these pins will also go in these holes here, come from the backside, and then we'll have to put a Levis on it, you know, to turn. And here's what we've got. I'm talking with a, uh, actually a couple of uh, different channels about maybe a collaboration video, getting them to do some machine work. Uh, I don't have time to do this. I mean, I can make time, I guess, if I need to, but I'd love to get some other stuff done. So this is actually a piece of brass, I'm, I'm assuming. And uh, these are the ends. Now, I don't think we have to do this. Uh, this is an adjustment, and I think this is mainly for wear. Over time, you know, you'd be able to push it in and, and keep your adjustment right. We're not going to be running this thing enough, I don't think, to need that. But, I mean, we can fake it on the end, or we can end up putting it in there. There's a 5 8 groove that have to be broached in, slotted in, and that piece has to be made. But uh, So we may do that, may not, but, I mean, it depends on if I end up having to do it or if we... If I do a video with someone, but I think uh, this is the only one I've got, and I think we need five of them, uh, six total, but five more. We need two for the dash pods that come down from here, and two for these ends, and two for these ends, and then this inside I think took us different style, but we could use the same style if we had made them, so that would be a uh, I'd be making seven of them. That's a lot. But anyway, maybe, maybe not. So, uh, anyway, the wrist plate, I did notice they had shimmed on one side. Uh, they must have needed to do that to get it straight. So we've got to take that into consideration. Uh, let me see. The We're missing one of these cast iron pieces. So we're going to have to cast it and then machine it. So that's really not going to be a problem. You know, we've got one to go by. Everything else we've got, uh, of course, that's been broken and fixed. This one, it looks like, no, this one hasn't been fixed, I don't think. Yeah, it has been. Someone's fixed this one. Uh, we've got places fixed for the packings. Uh, we actually got a little bit of movement in this one. I think we're going to be okay. So, coreless. <clears throat> Intake valves on top, exhaust valves on bottom. When this intake opens and lets the steam in, this exhaust opens and lets the steam out. So the piston can push this way, push it out of there. Does the opposite. This one opens, steam goes in, and steam comes out the bottom and goes to our exhaust hole. So it's actually a, a really simple setup when it comes to that. Uh, what is different between a cordless valve and other valves? Okay, uh, putting steam in an engine is, is sort of critical time-wise uh, you know you got timing of course of when the steam goes in but the problem was is with like with a slide valve it would open and then it would close slowly 
and that was the problem so cordless came up with this way which it opens lets the steam in and then it actually trips and closes really fast and that was the big you know the big difference between a cordless and a non cordless engine is the time that you know it took to shut the steam back off so that's what he came up with now on normal cordless engines there would be a trip valve that when it goes so far this intake valve it would trip and let the dash pod fall and basically slam the valve shut you know for that's exactly what you know what it done was shut the valve really fast so what it comes down to is this engine is like has a toggle set up so instead of having the the dash pod and a latch it has an over the center rod and it's just completely different than any of the other styles and you know this is something that you almost have to see it work to understand it and <laughs> I need to see it work so I can understand it better uh, Rich had the model and I was able to watch it and you know you can see how it works but uh, it'll be nice, really nice to be able to get this hooked up and set up and turn this engine so we can really see. Now, the only fear I have, i got to take these valves out. And there's been a lot done here, as you can see, backed off, welded on, on these packings. We've got a square nut on that one. Uh, that one's backed off. That one's missing. This one's been brazed on. So, all of these packings have been pulled out and loose. I'm assuming that it would have had a rope seal in there and it packed. I'm guessing. I'm not even sure of that. This one's been brazed also. Uh, so we've, we've sort of got a mess to, to get into. See that one's actually, they turn a little bit and but they won't turn because of the packing. It makes me think maybe the valves are not stuck in it. Okay valves and what they are is a piece that runs through that has slots in it. And when it turns, it allows the openings to go to the right place. So what I've got to do is take these caps off and hopefully be able to press the entire valve out of this thing. And I don't know, I'm sure you can't see down in the hole, but they're down in there. And so we've got to take it apart. We're going to have to clean it and make sure everything's right and then put it back together and, of course, figure out these packings on here. I'm assuming rope seal packing. Uh, I've done a lot of rope seals on old tractors and, and engines that, you know, had water pump seals. So, you know, maybe that'll carry on to this and be the same setup. Uh, we've got oil holes that are plugged up. Uh, every About every oil hole on this thing was plugged up, so we've got to get all that done. Now, I don't know how long it's been since this thing has ran. I mean, it's been a lot of years, but, you know, we're just going to keep at it. Uh, tag was right here that said Bates. It's missing, of course, which is shameful. Uh, somebody took it. Uh, these are your drains uh, for if you have water in your cylinder. This would uh, allow you to open them up, you know, a little bit when you're running it, or you know, when you start to run it to get all your water out because you do, water don't compress. Uh, you can see a little rust down here. This is actually just a cover, sheet metal, uh, sort of like insulation. Or to cover the insulation. Uh, we got our slide we got to work on. This will get taken out, cleaned, fixed up. Everything will get cleaned and this will get polished. And then uh, we'll get it back together. I don't want to do some of this because of... Uh, I want to get a roof over it. I really do. I don't want... You know, I wouldn't want to clean it up and then it get rained on and then be a mess. Uh, you can see one of our oilers here. I ordered a bunch of them oilers, and they're actually uh, aftermarket Chinese made, but I needed some, and I didn't have enough, and these things are so daggone expensive. I had some subscribers send me some, and we are using them. Every one of them that was sent to me, I'm using, uh, but as many as this thing takes, it's still not enough. I mean, there's one here, one here, one here, uh, four on the valves. Uh, let me see. There's going to be one sitting out that actually oils this there's another rod that goes in I'll show you all that later there's two here one here uh, I think there's actually one 
something's going to have to go here and then on this one too i got it upside down right now but so basically what i'm getting at is there's a, a buttload of oilers on this thing so. all right that's where we're at on it uh, i've got of course i got the piston out i've got to order a shaft i'm going to go ahead and get a new uh chrome plated uh hydraulic cylinder shaft i got a buddy that owns a hydraulic shop that it, order will order me one he said for cost so we'll get it and we'll have to uh, machine it thread it on the end to thread into our cross slide i guess is what it is and then uh once that's done we've got to figure out how it goes in that piston i think it's uh pressed in and then pinned sweat fit and pinned we'll have to figure that out uh, the rings, messing with them, they're about three-quarter wide. They really scare me because if I break one of them, I'm sort of screwed. So we're going to have to be really careful with the rings. And uh, it's not a job that I am looking forward to. And uh, But, you know, the cylinder looks good. This thing's going to run. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that we, we can make it run. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the goal. Uh, that's our plans, anyway. You know, the only bad thing about this, uh, let's say we needed to pull this and we was going to set it up on board or we had to do some machine work to it that wasn't right here. Now, if I had to bore, I'd probably try to set something up, make a boring bar. But if I had to move it, you can't just take these bolts out and pick this up because the studs are all uh, in the concrete. So the entire machine would have to be picked up and then it would have to be slid out, so, which is a pain in the butt. But anyway so that's where we're at on this one okay uh let me see that was my ladder i was using to get up on the roof but we've got really got lucky on the 10. uh i had found some i was going to go get and it was going to you know cost a dollar a foot basically you know about a hundred dollars for what i needed and uh i just i put it off for an extra day and i'm glad i did because a friend of mine just contacted me out of nowhere and didn't even know I needed any and said, hey, I got some 10, uh, and he had seven three foot wide sheets that were uh, just a little bit over the length I needed. And so basically it was a perfect amount. And uh, here's what we had left. It was uh, about half a sheet and a piece of one. And they was already cut off. That was just stuff that came with it. So, so anyway, we was able to get our, our roof on. I made some pieces. Uh, I machined them to hook on the angle iron. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I, I actually machined a uh, groove in it, slid it on the angle on the uh, I beam, and then I bolted it through the rafter, and that hooked the uh, the rafters down. I done every one of them. Uh, I didn't skip any of them and had to do that one backwards of course to get it on this side but that's done and the only thing I've got left to do is I need to go on the other side of that z-bar this board is sitting the header is sitting down inside that z-bar sort of got a, a u shape at the bottom but I still need to go to the inside of that and drill the hole there's holes in that z-bar already so we just need to drill it and put some bolts through it. Uh, our tin's a little dirty, but you know, it's free tin, I'm not complaining. We was gonna use old stuff, the old, uh, you know, rusty. I didn't wanna put new tin on it. And I've been getting squirrels, you can see up in my insulation on my other one. I put the insulation, cause you know, if I ever close it in, I didn't want it to sweat in there bad, but you know, that's 200 and something dollars a roll and the squirrels get in there and just tear it all to pieces. So. Ah, uh, aggravating. Very aggravating. So, uh, anyway, that's where we're at. And trying to get work with some collaboration videos. Maybe get, uh, I got to get one piece cast. I've got to get one, uh, or get them pieces made. And I, like I said, I may end up doing it myself. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, for the time being, work on the roof for the Bates engine. We're also going to be working on cleaning this engine up. Uh, my new helper, we've been, uh, pulling wheels and tires out that I've had for years and stacking them and uh, trying to get rid of some tires because tires at a facility like mine where you got junk cars you got you know trucks and you're building stuff you for some reason collect a lot of wheels and tires and it's kind of crazy because I'm in a county that has a tire shredding plant 
and if I lived in a different county I could bring them to this county and get rid of them for free but because I live in this county I gotta pay to get rid of them and they do it by the pound and it's not cheap so that's why I made the rim crusher so as you can see I've got all of these tires right here are on rims now anything that has a good rim I won't crush the rim but anything that's not will get crushed so if anybody's wondering why I made the rim crusher you know I got plenty of uh, place for it and that way I can get rid of these tires and tires you know mosquitoes and uh, I'm one of them people I don't know why uh, I don't have mosquitoes don't bite me I can be standing beside somebody and they can be just getting tore up by mosquitoes and they just don't bother me for some reason I don't know why uh, some people are just like that and then a cat there she don't bite me either so but uh anyway so that's the deal get this thing cleaned up start getting it together and uh picking up another steam engine tomorrow uh not nearly this big and been waiting on it for uh, a couple months so i'll probably add it into this video and because uh, i know everybody just wants to listen to me talk right so uh anyway that's where we're at we've been uh really rolling with the wrecks uh they've been just absolutely crazy here lately uh you know i, I got three in one day so that's that's pretty good for in you know in the area we're in so uh, and then the day before that I got two, so you know it's five wrecks in two days. So we're staying busy with that. We're getting a lot of you know uh, drunks and abandoned cars also. So it's the way that always goes. But anyway, so uh, we're working away, and hopefully to have this. And you know I've still got, and, and it's pretty hard on my mind right now. But I've still got that orange paint deal on my mind about the. Uh, the unit crane i really would like to get that thing painted it deserves it you know it's worked hard uh i've got no complaints about that machine so i really need to get some paint on it uh one of my subscribers had sent me the decals for this machine and the big round decals that they printed out so you know i i want to paint it and get my decals on it i think it would look really good orange and you know, I probably need to tighten the track set, but I'm going to wait on that. I'm not in any hurry. This thing barely moves. I mean, well, it moves fine. But what I'm saying is, is I barely move it. You know, maybe 10 foot here, 10 foot there, and that's about it. And that's one of the reasons I didn't build this, this entire roof. Uh, I left this open enough that I can come through with the boom up. And besides that little tree limb there, but that way I can sneak through here with the crane if i need to and these will be two like i said two separate roofs uh the plan so far is i've got some really big pipe and i'm talking about you know six or eight inch probably eight inch two of them and then some smaller stuff on this side and then probably some eight by eight uh wooden beams i'm gonna saw them and the beams from what i'm understanding what i'm seeing is a lot of people actually do them green I don't really want to use trees that I just cut that are, are completely green. Maybe something that's been laying down for a little while. Uh, I've got some dead trees i got to go cut at a friend of mine's place. It's probably got enough to do what I need to do. So They're standing dead. Uh, the pines do that every once in a while here. and uh, But they're really, they're still good, you know, good trees to cut. And I can do some 8x8 eight eight beams. I can do 6x6, six six, but I kind of want it a little bit bigger eight by eight i want to do the beams and then i want to do the full roof with uh strips of wood and then i want to do the uh slate over top of that so when you're looking from the bottom inside you'll see nothing but wood when you look at the top you'll see slate so that's the plan that's the
Okay, not enough engine for the fan, but we're just playing. And uh, it had a 10 horse three phase uh, motor on it off a big air conditioning unit, but uh, fan is huge and it moves some air now. But uh, what we gotta do is put a bigger motor on. It's a brand new Predator, but it's just not, uh, it's not enough. I had bought that for a go-kart, so we'll save it for later. All right, so we're taking the uh, cordless valve apart. These are the exhausts on the bottom, and that's the intake on top, and getting everything cleaned up in it. This one here is the only one that was stuck, and uh, we're using a hub puller or an axle puller. Well, it's actually a hub puller for the back of a an old car, and uh, that's what we're using to, to get it out. And it's actually pushing it. Came a good ways with it. We've got a ways to go, but the other ones weren't stuck. Let's see if I can find one of them here. Here's the here's the exhaust. This one really went on the bottom. And this just turns. And it's on a T-spot on the end. So we're gonna hone everything out, clean everything out. Here's one of them in. And then of course make new gaskets and clean everything up and get it all back together. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and call it on this for for now. Uh, we've got a storm coming. We're going to get everything tarped over. Uh, we've got a ball hone here, but I ordered a three and a half ball hone. That's a four. And uh, try to get everything cleaned up inside. I don't see any issues, so why, you know, it won't work out fine. Uh, I'm assuming that these just had rope seal. Yeah, I've got to get a hold of Ernie at uh, New England wireless and steam museum he's been helping me out on a lot of this stuff but uh we've got to figure out what we need to use for rope seals here and uh everything else is looking good our puller worked good uh let's get it off and uh we've got a lot of cleaning up to do and like i said i gotta order the material for the rod we're gonna make a new rod chrome plated and we're gonna keep at it everything else is good uh next video will probably be on the truck uh the wrecker that we're putting together and I did pick up another steam engine all right try to make it quick for this thing goes dead here is a Sears and Roebuck made by Kenwood sold by Sears and Roebuck this is the smallest one that was available and cute little engine runs good I'll show more on it later uh, we're gonna do a foundation for it under the shed here with this and that of course like I said we've got our tent on so uh, I don't know whether we go with rock or brick or what, build a taller foundation for it and get it mounted on it and run it a little bit. All right, appreciate everybody watching and keep up with us for uh, we're rolling on. Till next time, bye. Say bye, Vic. Bye, Vic. <laughs>